I love tomatoes. I know it's a cliche, but I can't get enough of them. And to get an earlier crop, it's essential that you start plants indoors to give them a head start on the season. If your house is like mine and you haven't got many windowsills, then you'll need to provide artificial light or your plants will be weak and leggy. But how much light do seedlings really need? And can least cheap grow lights provide enough of it to start tomato plants indoors and get us an earlier harvest later in the year? Last year I jury-rigged an indoor growing station from some flat pack shelves that I bought online. I screwed the two frames together, bought far too many lights, and I placed it by the kitchen window and simply hoped for the best. And it sort of worked. By throwing as much light as I could at the plants, I managed to stop them from going leggy. But just how much of this was a waste of money? Did I really need to buy all these lights? And how much light do young plants really need? I'm going to run an experiment. I'm going to sow a bunch of tomato seeds and use my growing station to try and find out how much light they really need. By varying the light intensity on each of the shelves, I'm going to try and find the cutoff point from healthy plant to leggy seedling. The first thing to do is to sow some seeds. I'm going to be growing six different types of tomato. I've got cherry tomatoes, plum tomatoes, beefsteak tomatoes, and ordinary salad tomatoes too. There must be about 20 pounds worth of seeds here. To get them to germinate faster, I'm going to pour each of them their own cup of tea. Don't worry, I will give them time to cool down. By soaking the seeds in tea, we make the seed coat absorb water, swell, and even ferment a little. All of this helps the seed embryo break out faster, but soaking for too long can be harmful for the seed, so I'll just leave them overnight. Well, there's no sign of germination just yet, but it is time to get them out of their cups and in to some pots. To fill up my pots, I'm going to be using my signature blend of seed compost, coconut coir, and perlite. When making my mix, I normally just eyeball it, but this time I'm going to weigh everything so that the mixture is consistent between batches. Then I'm going to fill my pots with the mix and sow the tomato seeds near the surface. I'll cover them with more coir, water them from the bottom by adding water to the trays, and take them upstairs to the growing station to germinate. While the seeds are germinating, it's time to set up the lighting so we can find out if these lights are powerful enough to grow tomato seedlings. My growing station has eight shelves and two sets of four LED strip lights, which gives us lots of lighting conditions to play around with. For this experiment, we're going to look at how the intensity of light as it reaches the plant's leaves affects the rate of plant growth. Documentation for these lights is very scant, but if you look at the online sales page, it claims that the LED strips emit a total of 2,700 lumen, which is a measure of the rate of energy emitted by the lights, and that's in all directions too, which includes the wasted light that goes out into the rest of the room. This information is really useful for comparing light bulbs, but much less so when the light is directional. And it doesn't account for distance either, because as you get further away, the light spreads out, and the amount of light in a given area, or the intensity of the light, goes down. Yes, your parents were onto something when they told you to sit further away from the TV. This means we can leave one set of LEDs on full power, adjust the second set to be on half power, and then vary the light intensity for plants on each of the shelves by changing how far away we put the tomato seedlings from the light source by stacking trays underneath the plants. We can use the automatic timers built into the grow lights to make sure our plants always get light for 12 hours each day. We can cover up this window for the duration of the experiment so that no daylight gets in. That would be cheating. Of course, we'll also record the light intensity using an app measuring the daily light integral, or DLI, at the soil surface. And at the end of the experiment, we can measure how leggy the tomato seedlings are, find out how much light they need to stay healthy, and see if these grow lights can provide enough light to grow tomato plants. And with all that out the way, let the experiment begin. Tomato seeds can take a while to germinate. In optimal conditions, they should germinate within one or two weeks, but sometimes as fast as two or three days if you soak the seeds and provide enough heat. No, of course I didn't forget to take the bins out. 
okay, so I've not seen any sign of germination, but I do have a couple of tricks up my sleeve. It would be really embarrassing if none of the seeds germinated, so I'm gonna add this lid over the top to try and trap some humidity and help the soil surface stay moist. Try saying that one drunk. It also occurred to me that my house is a little bit on the cold side. Right now it's somewhere around eight degrees C, which isn't enough for tomatoes. They prefer something closer to the mid twenties. So reluctantly, I'm going to have to turn up the thermostat, but it definitely doesn't help when you've got a window with wind coming from behind the frame. A more energy efficient option would have been to buy these heat mats, which directly warm the trays rather than your entire house. But unfortunately, I'm the only one financing this video and there wasn't enough in the budget for eight heat mats. Guys, it's happened. I've not checked on them for a couple of days, but they finally germinated. Sun Gold was an absolute trooper. We've got a few of the Roma, as well as one or two of the Italian sounding ones, but we're gonna to have to wait a little while longer and give the rest of them more time. At this point, there was little more I could do but wait for the seeds to grow. I'd come back several times over the next week and I gave them some water on day 14, but I'd have to wait until the end of the experiment to see how the plants responded to the different light levels. It's been three weeks since I sowed the tomato seeds and honestly, I need this room back. So tomatoes, your time is up. It was at this point that the hard work really began. I had to measure the height and width for the stems of each of the plants, which took all evening. And then I had to actually quantify legginess by dividing the height by the width and create a graph of legginess against light levels for each variety so I could compare, which took all night. This is the completed graph. And you can see that at low light levels on the left, the plants are super leggy. But as the light levels increase, the legginess starts to flatten off and the plants become more healthy. The healthy region where plants have enough light begins at a DLI of about five to six, which for these grow lights means your tomato plants need to be within 10 centimeters of the LEDs. However, what's really interesting is how the different plants responded differently to the light levels. However, this graph on its own is a little bit boring and you can see the results for yourself if we go and put the plants side by side. The sun gold tomatoes are reasonably strong, even at low light levels, while other varieties fared this well. In particular, the plum tomato Roma, which struggled at all light levels, while the cherry tomatoes did really well under the brighter lights. So can cheap grow lights provide enough light to grow tomato plants indoors? Well, if you're using lights like these ones and you can make sure that your plants are never more than 10 centimeters away from the lights, or that the light intensity is more than five moles per meter squared per day, and you pick varieties like sun gold, red cherry, or black cherry, which do better under artificial light, then the data says yes, you can grow tomatoes indoors under cheap grow lights. I'll put a link to everything that I've used here in the description, including the seeds, so that you can get a head start on your growing season. But as your tomato plants get bigger, they'll need to be grown outside at least during the day even though it's probably still too cold, which is why I made this video here about plastic greenhouses and whether or not they are worth the money for the home grower. Please press the like button if this video was helpful and as always, happy gardening.